sums, products, and quotients of complex numbers. And that title sums up our objective. We want to, do, to determine the sums, products, and quotients of complex numbers. So what do we know that's going to be useful in this video? We know what a complex number is, a combination of a real number and an imaginary number. It's made up of a real part, an imaginary part, and the imaginary unit, which is the square root of negative one. We know the rectangular form of a complex number is x plus y i. We know the polar or trigonometric form of a complex number is r times the cosine of theta plus j times the sine of theta. And in the polar or trigonometric form, theta can be in degrees or radians. And a couple of shortcuts we know about, shortcuts for writing that, because that's awfully long to write, R with the theta kind of inside the angle symbol, R with the theta behind the angle symbol, and R C I S theta, of course, cosine I sine, I being the mathematical representation for the imaginary unit. We saw in our previous video the exponential form of a complex number, which is r times e raised to the j times theta power. And in the exponential form, theta is in radians. And we want to remind ourselves of the laws of exponents. If we're multiplying two exponents that have the same base, the base remains the same and we add the exponents. If we're dividing two exponents that have the same base, the base remains the same and we subtract the exponents. One of the reasons we learned the, comp the exponential form of, com of a complex number is because we can combine this with the laws of exponents and come up with the formula for multiplying and dividing complex numbers rather easily, far more easily than we can if we use the polar or the trigonometric form. So let's see how that works. Okay, so again, we wanna keep an eye on this and on this. Okay, let's use the exponential form and the laws of exponents to multiply two complex numbers. Okay, well, complex number one, I will say is R1 times E to the j theta one, okay? And complex number two in exponential form is r sub two times e to the j times theta sub two. Okay, now let's kind of put this together with our laws of exponents. Okay, well these are constants, so we'll multiply those, r one times r two. And we have the same base, so we'll keep the base and we will add the exponents. So e raised to the j times theta sub one plus j times theta sub two. Okay, we'll notice that in the exponent j is a common factor. So we can rewrite this as r sub one times r sub two times e to the j times the sum theta sub one plus theta sub two. Okay, so this is where we're gonna be focused on right here. Okay, the, the product of two complex numbers written in exponential form is r sub one times r sub two times e raised to the j times theta one plus theta two. Okay, so we know, okay, we know that the complex form, we know, okay, that r times e to the j theta is the same thing as r in the polar form, cosine theta plus j sine theta, okay? So we know that's true. Now let's take a look, okay? so so. We're going to say 
what is R, R sub 1, R sub 2, e to the j theta 1 plus theta 2 look like in polar form? Okay, R sub 1 times R sub 2 times e to the j times theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. Okay, we'll let this be our R, and we'll let this be our theta, and we'll put the R into here, and we'll put the theta in for theta. Well, this is going to tell us that the product is R sub 1 times R sub 2, R sub, being substituting R sub 1, R sub 2 in for R, times, well, the cosine of theta is the cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2, plus J times the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. And there you have it. Okay, we now have the ability to multiply uh, two complex numbers. Okay, so putting all this together, the product of two complex numbers. Okay, so now we don't have to have them in, we don't have to have them in uh, exponential form. We can say r sub 1 times the cosine of theta sub 1 plus j times the sine of theta sub 1 times r sub 2 times the cosine of theta sub 2 plus j times the sine of theta sub 2 is equal to, well, multiply the r's. So r sub 1 times r sub 2. And then, whoops, I don't want to put equals here. And then we just have to do with this, we say it's the cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So the cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus j times the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay, so there we have it. The product of two complex numbers. Here's the polar form. Uh, the first complex number times the second complex number. We multiply the magnitudes or the r's and then we add the angles. Okay, so let's note that. In the product, we multiply the magnitudes, and that makes sense, and we add the angles. In a short form, a kind of a shorthand form, which might uh, make, make eh, it might be a little nicer to see, uh, r sub 1 theta 1 times r sub 2 theta sub 2. So here is, here are two complex numbers in a polar shorthand form. Well, we multiply the magnitudes and we add the angles. So there's the shorthand form, or one of the shorthand forms anyways. Okay, let's do an example. That'll help us. And I've done this example in radians using pi. So we can see something like that, what goes on with that. Because remember, the polar form can have the, the, the angle in radian form. So I'm going to use that shorthand form we just saw. Okay, R, R sub 1, we know R sub 1, theta sub 1, times R sub 2, with theta sub 2, so this is the first polar form in shorthand. Whoops, this is a 2 times the second one in shorthand. So we know that these two, we multiply the magnitudes, we add the angles. Well, that's pretty simple. Let's take this one. So 3.6 with an angle of 7 pi over 4 times 1.4, the 
the angle of pi over 2. We're going to multiply the magnitudes. So this is going to be 3.6 times 1.4. And we're going to add the angles. So this will be 7 pi over 4 plus pi over 2. Okay, so multiplication here, that comes out to be approximately 5.04. And if I add up this, well, let's see, this is 4 pi, excuse me, this is 2 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4 plus 7 pi over 4 is 9 pi over 4. And that's the answer. However, this is larger than 2 pi. So this is, you're going around the circle more than one time. And normally we like our angle to be between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, which is the same as being between 0 pi and 2 pi. So we're going to recognize that the better answer here is going to be the angle of pi over 4 because 9 pi, 9 pi over 4 is greater than 2 pi which is 8 pi over 4 by a pi over 4, by 1, okay? And we want the final result needs to be, should be, needs to be or should be an angle between, well, in this case, we're in radians, so we'll say 0 and 2 pi. That's once around the circle. Had we been in degrees up here, we would say between 0 and 360 degrees. So there you have it. It looks a little simpler now. Um, now that we know the formula, uh, it's, it's very quick to do the multiplication. Multiply the R's, add the thetas, and you're done. And again, this was all done in shorthand form. This, of course, is 5.05 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus j times the sine of pi over 4 in the longer polar form. The same idea can happen when we're talking about division. It's just that I'm not going to do all of that proving. I'm just going to show you what, it, what happens. Okay, so what we're doing here again is we're taking two numbers, two two complex numbers in their exponential form, and we're going to divide them. And because they're in the exponential form, we can take advantage of the rules of exponents. So this is r sub 1 divided by r sub 2, same base di uh, dividing. We keep the base and we subtract the exponents. Okay, and of course, in this exponent, we have a common factor of j, so let's factor it out. And the end result is r sub 1 over r sub 2 times e to the j times theta sub 1 minus theta sub 2. Okay, so again, I won't go through and, and, and prove this one. Let's just note the quotient of a complex number when it's in polar form is easy to find now we divide the magnitudes we subtract the angles so let's put it in polar form r sub 1 times the cosine of theta sub 1 plus j times the sine of theta sub 1 divided by r sub 2 times the cosine of theta sub 2 plus j times the sine of theta sub 2. Again, now we're in trigonometric or polar form, and we now know that this is equal to r sub 1 divided by r sub 2 times the cosine of theta sub 1 minus theta sub 2 plus j times the sine of theta sub 1 minus theta sub 2. Okay, so now let's recall here. Okay, what are we doing? We are dividing the magnitudes, and that makes sense for finding the quotient. So we should divide the magnitudes. And we are subtracting the angles. So subtract the angles. Okay, 
All right, let's take a look at an example. Again, it always helps to see this, and I, I wrote this one out in the long hand of the, and this is uh, the long version in the polar form. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm not going to do all that long version. I'm going to write this in the cis form. Okay, it's just so we can see a little different look. So we want to take this complex number, 3.6 times the cosine of 56 degrees plus j times the sine of 56 degrees, and we want to divide it by this co uh, complex number, 1.4 times the cosine of 315 degrees plus j times the sine of 315 degrees. We want to find the polar form of that quotient. Well, we know our rule says, and I'm going to write this with the shorthand, R sub 1 cis theta sub 1 divided by R sub 2 cis theta sub 2 is equal to the quotient of the magnitudes times the difference of the angles. So let's put that into place. Again, I'm going to write this in a the shorthand cis form just because there's a lot less writing, okay? So, we have 3.6 cis of 56 degrees. We want to divide that by 1.4 cis of 315 degrees. And so we're going to take, I'll make sure the paper's still straight for you. We're going to take and we're going to divide the magnitudes 3.6 divided by 1.4, and we're going to subtract the, uh, the uh, angles. So we can say, if we want to keep it in this cis form, we'll say this is going to be cis of 56 degrees minus 315 degrees. So again, I'm keeping it in a shorthand form for less writing. I'll now break it apart. Okay, so this is 3.6 divided by 1.4. That's approximately 2.6. And now let's do, let's write it out. This is the cosine. Well, this is of uh, 56 minus 315 is negative 259 degrees plus J times the sine of the same, negative 259 degrees. So I went from the shorthand form to the longer form. Okay, and uh, so now we want to recognize that this is not between, this is not between 0 and 360. This is back 259 degrees, going the opposite way. So if we add 360 to this, we'll get into between 0 and 360. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, negative 259 plus 360 is 101. So this is, comes out to be 2.6 times the cosine of 101 degrees plus J times the sine of 101 degrees. So that is your polar form of the quotient. And we want to note here because negative 259 degrees plus 360 degrees is in the same place. We're going to round the circle one time, but we're going to come up with a positive angle between 0 and 360, which is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. So there you have it, a little division of two complex numbers in polar form. Okay, last example. We haven't talked about sums yet, so let's get a little bit into the sums. We will note it's reasonably simple to multiply and divide numbers in polar form. We have the little formula there. However, to add or subtract numbers given in polar form, we first need to convert to rectangular form and then do the adding. So it's a little more complicated. Okay, so we have a shorthand form here, 1.5 with an angle of 37.6 degrees. That is the first complex number and we want to add that to 3.8 with an angle of 146.2 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to first put this into polar form. So the shorthand polar form to the longer polar form 
is going to be 1.5 times the cosine of 37.6 degrees plus J times the sine of 37.6 degrees. I'm going to add that. So I just changed it from the shorthand form to the longer form. I need that parenthesis right there. I want to add it to this complex number, which is 3.8 times the cosine of 146.2 degrees plus J times the sine of 146.2 degrees. Okay, now we need to get it into rectangular form so we know we can now multiply to get our X, to get it rectangular form, we're gonna distribute. So distribute. Okay, well, 1.5 times the cosine of 37.6 degrees is 1.19, approximately. And 1.5 times the sine of 37.6 degrees is 0.92. And then there's our J. So here I've distributed the 1.5 over these two and come up with the rectangular form of this first complex number, plus to the second complex number, 3.8 times the cosine of 146.2 degrees is a negative. It's negative 3.16. I'm obviously rounding to the hundredth. And then 3.8 times the sine of 146.2 degrees is 2.11. And then don't forget the J. Now, of course, we can combine like terms. We're adding, after all. So 1.19 plus negative 3.16 is negative 1.97. And 0.92J plus 2.11J is a positive 3.03J. Well, let's recognize that this is negative. Our X is negative. Our Y on the grid is positive. Well, that tells us that we are in quadrant number two. Okay, so this is the answer. Uh, the answer is negative 1.97 plus 3.03J. This answer, however, is in rectangular form. We started off in polar form, so we had to go back to polar form in our answer. So let's do that. So next up here, let's go back to polar. Okay, polar requires an r and a theta. Well, the r is equal to the square root. We've been here, done this. Negative 1.97 squared plus 3.03 squared, square root of all that. And that comes out to be approximately 3.61 to the hundredth. Okay, we are in quadrant two, so we need to find our theta reference which is equal to the inverse tangent of the absolute value of the y, 3.03 over the x, negative 1.97. And that comes out to be approximately 5, whoops, 56. Let me erase that so it doesn't look, it looks a little better, 56.97 degrees. But again, as noted, we're in quadrant two so quadrant two tells us that we need to take that angle and subtract it from 180 degrees. And the angle we're looking for, the standard position angle is 123.03 degrees. And so now we have an R, we have a theta. The sum, we can go back and write it in polar form. We started with this polar form that was in kind of a shorthand. So we'll do our sum as well in shorthand. I think you can still see me. I'm gonna go up a little higher here. The sum is, well, R is 3.61. There's the angle. And the theta is 123.03 degrees. So there you have it. Quite a bit of work uh, with multiplying, uh, dividing, and adding two complex numbers.